How can my corrupt political opponent, crooked Joe Biden, put me on trial during an election campaign that I'm winning by a lot, but forcing me nevertheless to spend time and money away from the campaign trail in order to fight bogus, made-up accusations and charges. That's what they're doing. I'm sorry, I won't be able to go to Iowa today. I won't be able to go to New Hampshire today because I'm sitting in a courtroom on because his attorney general charged me with something. Terrible. Why, if they were going to do it, why didn't they do it two and a half years ago before the election, right? They waited till the election. They waited. And I probably have another one. They say there's a young woman, uh, a young racist in Atlanta. Say racist. And they say, I guess, they say that she was after a certain gang, and she ended up having an affair with the head of the gang or a gang member. And this is a person that wants to indict me. She's got a lot of problems but she wants to indict me to try and run for some other office. Uh, what's going on in this country is uh, — and by the way, wants to indict me for a perfect phone call. This was even better than my perfect call with Ukraine. Remember that call? That was a perfect call. This one's better. This one is more perfect. I challenged the election in Georgia, which I have every right to do, which I was right about, frankly. And they want to indict me because I challenged the election. So does that mean that Hillary Clinton, who challenged the election, does that mean that Stacey Abrams and all of the other — virtually every Democrat challenges the election? Does that mean — or they do the slate of electors. This has been going on since Thomas Jefferson. He wanted to say — but they don't call. They used my word. They took it, and they said, fake. So this is all about election interference, but that isn't quite good enough. Crooked Joe now wants the thug prosecutor, this deranged guy, to file a court order taking away my First Amendment rights so that I can't speak. So listen to this. We don't want you to speak about the case. The case. The case is, is a ridiculous case. It's a First Amendment case. But we don't want Trump to speak. So. They want me — they take away your rights on First Amendment. Now they sue because — so now I have one of these lunatic reporters back there saying, Sir, would like to talk to you about your case. Or, or, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Somehow that's not good for votes. Do you agree? When we say, I can't talk, I'd love to — I will talk about it. I will. They're not taking away my First Amendment rights. Didn't look like it, but we got rid of a lot. But we're also fighting — then they have this crap going on. I never even thought of this one. Trump didn't really believe he won the election. Let me tell you, people that know me say, that's one thing, I tell you. There was never a second of any day that I didn't believe that that election was rigged. It was a rigged election. It was a rigged election, and it was a stolen, disgusting election. And this country should be ashamed. And from my first day in office, I will appoint a special prosecutor to study each and every one of the many claims being brought forth by Congress, and they're doing a good job. Jamie Comer, Jim Jordan, all of them, concerning all of the crooked acts, including bribes from China and many other countries, all these foreign countries sending money into the coffers of the Biden crime family. We will have a special prosecutor, and now they'll come after me even a little harder, but I don't know how many more. How much harder can they do it? I should have four by sometime next week. I never heard. You know, I went to the Wharton School of Finance. We never studied indictment. We never studied arrest. We never studied prison. These are sick people we're dealing with.